Hello and welcome to So This Is Thailand. I'm Johan Wimonchalau. สวัสดีครับ I'm t a p a n i m a n a w e สวัสดีค่ะ And I'm Belinda Skinner. สวัสดีค่ะ And a very happy King Chulalongkorn Memorial Day to everyone out there. As everyone knows, probably on holiday, enjoying an extended weekend as well. Mm-hmm. Did you guys have any plans to do anything fun? No, mm-hmm. I <laughs> just enjoying the <laughs> relatively enjoy the low levels of traffic. You know, just going out and going somewhere far is what I usually do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, somewhere that would normally take ages to get to, and it's a relative breeze while everyone's out. Sure, it's nice, isn't it? Any public yeah. holiday is uh, is a nice mm-hmm. day to have off or. Relax yeah. or do something that you yeah. wouldn't do. Yeah, and you, you know, usually around the same time of the year, and this is when the, the weather starts changing. We're mm-hmm. getting out of the rainy season, getting into the drier season, and the mm-hmm. cooler season. It mm-hmm. hasn't rained for days, actually. So yeah, this is great, yeah, and exactly. uh, the weather is a little bit cooler as well. Well, as well as enjoying the time off, uh, we must uh, say take a moment to uh, celebrate and commemorate uh, King Chulalongkorn, who abolished slavery. To education and civilization in all sorts of ways to Thailand and uh, is still revered in uh, many aspects by the Thai people. Well, absolutely. You know, for for a lot of the foreigners out there who you know, when you look out at people's homes or even businesses, mm-hmm. in addition to the current monarch's picture, you'll see a lot of times you'll mm-hmm. see King Chulalongkorn mm-hmm. also there on on the wall because he's so revered in. Yes, and because he was a great uh, tradesman, mm-hmm. so he did trade with uh, foreign countries and things like that. So I do believe that it's good luck to have um, the pictures of him in the shops, to uh, for for like prosperous trade, basically. Is there anything special that happens on the on, on this day? Like, is there any special celebration, or is people supposed to do anything? You know, on certain days, it's it's good luck to do something, or go to the temple, or pay respect. Is there anything that happens well, that you're aware of? <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of people will be making their way down to the equestrian statue in front of the um, uh, of the palace, and uh, you know, just uh, offering uh, flowers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, candles, oh, okay. things like that. And then, uh, mm-hmm. usually on any holiday, it's, it's it's always a great day for for ties to go out in mm-hmm. Tambun and make merit as mm-hmm. well. So uh, you'll see that on any any free any day, day off. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, speaking of um, celebrating and uh, taking a bit of a break, Bangkok. Good news for Bangkok um, is that um, the good news is that Bangkok is getting greener. Do you believe that? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration would beg to differ. They have undergone a huge project to expand Bangkok's green areas by 5,000 rai, and they have surpassed this target by 25 rai. It has been announced. Uh, the city hall is uh, also in the process of uh, developing a 100 rai public park in Bangbon District, which is due to finish next year. And another park around Wat c h a r a p o n intersection uh, on a 21 rai plot of land, which has been donated by the Expressway and Rapid Transit Authority of Thailand. That is really great. I think we really do need a lot more public parks around, um, especially because so much more traffic, so much more congestion. The Um, the air pollution is getting worse all the time, but uh, this may surprise you to know uh, a recent article, uh, actually back in 2007, ranked Bangkok back then as the 13th greenest city in the world. So wow. it's not wow. as bad as it seems, and that was before all this new developments had started taking place. Well, I think Incredible. it's because a lot of, in the, especially mm-hmm. in the downtown area, you have all these new developments, you follow all these expressways mm. and the road systems, mm. and it's. Yeah, we have trees everywhere, but you don't have too many parks where people can go and mm. relax. But it's good that you know you start to see them creeping up. Mm. They're not just taking every available plot of land out there and building some high rise. Mm. They're getting some thought to urban development and knowing that there's a quality of living and also in terms yeah. of the convenience. The, it's really good though. Uh, the parks that they do have here, I don't mm. know how many parks you've actually been to, but I go to a, a, one of my favorite ones is up at Jadajuk. Mm. And on the weekends, I like to go up to take uh, five or ten k's. And the the, car- the sorry, the parks are just beautiful. So mm-hmm. what parks we do have? Um, Bangkok does a, a really good job. So if you do wanting to go out to have a a picnic or do some exercise, there's a lot of people actually exercising out there early morning or at, at night time. 
Um, there's a lot of lights on in the park. It, I think we do have some really beautiful parks. Mm. I think they do a good job there. Well, one of the things that I missed from uh, my day studying in the UK is that actually you don't need a 21 rye plot of land to have a park. In the UK, they have these little squares that is just on the corner of the mm. road, and uh, people can go there, and you know the kids can actually play on grass. Say if you live in a condo or something like that, just a small space. It doesn't really take a lot. That uh, is more frequent and more more evenly spaced out than a really huge park which takes you ages to get to and is in the middle of nowhere, that kind of thing. Anyway. Oh, that's a good point. I think, you know, easy. if you could have more, and it's much easier to find smaller plots of land as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, speaking of pollution and greener areas, there is a move by Chevron, one of the largest uh, petroleum suppliers and manufacturers here in, in the country, is looking towards or planning towards the end of 91 octane sales looking towards especially 95, gas hall 95. Um, obviously, gas hall, for those who may not know what gas hall is, <laughs> it is a blend between uh, petroleum and also a little more uh, ethanol additive. Mm -hmm. E20 is just more ethanol. It's mm -hmm. ethanol 20% and then you have petrol uh, 80%. Uh, but, you know, they're looking at, because a lot of the newest ca newer cars coming out, they're all E20 certified. A lot of the older cars, obviously, are on 91, but they're getting phased out. And it's also not as, well, it's not as good for the environment, obviously, number mm -hmm. one. And also, you know, they're looking to get into a cleaner burning fuel, which is, which is great. Now, uh, Caltex, or, you know, of, of Chevron, um, sells about 20 million liters of 91 octane per month, wow. as opposed to th only 3 million for 95. But they're planning ahead. They're looking to when the government is going to shift everyone over you know, it's just kind of like when you had lead fuels, mm. and obviously everyone mm. had to make the change. It's obviously, it's a change for the industry. It's a change for the automotive automotive uh, manufacturers as well. But it's a good move in, the, in overall. Will cars? I mean, are there many cars now that still have the ninety one? What happens when if they phase? Are they phasing it out, or they're completely stopping it at the moment? Uh, well, Chevron is going to look to phase out. They're they're they're, mm. they're weighing the options of whether they should stop production because there are other, mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, companies which are producing it. Right. Um, but you know, if you look at who really uses 91, well, it's a lot of the cars, but a lot of the motorcycles as well use 91. Oh, oh. oh that's a problem. And yeah. trucks? And Well, if a uh, cool thing about trucks is if anyone's seen out on the road, a lot of the trucks are moving to NGV. Yes, mm. I have noticed that. And, and you can actually get your car also converted yes. um, to gas. I, I've got a friend who, who has a car and we stopped and it was 100 baht or something to fill the whole tank. Right. And it lasted two weeks. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> um, you lose all your boot space. Yes. Mm. Uh, but yeah. It's and also when you go and park somewhere because of the safety issues, they try to make you park like really far away or on the roof or mm -hmm. something. So that's oh. a bit of a... It's true. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I didn't know that one. Yeah. Wow. Well, actually, in, in the U.S., you know, certain, tr uh, certain cars, if you are natural gas, you're not uh -huh. allowed to go into certain tunnels because they're afraid that oh, if there okay. was an accident. Oh, wow. Obviously being trapped in close fits. Uh, yes. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Well, uh, next up in Talk of the, of the Town, we are looking at uh, some issue that has been heavily debated for years and years, and it is about the online lottery. Now, a while back, a hundred uh, disabled people staged a, process, uh, a protest in front of the government lottery office. Now, as you might know, um, it is um, a sort of uh, another career of um, disabled people, you see a lot of blind people or disabled people selling these tickets is a great way for them to uh, earn income and uh, the, the protesters uh, argued that uh, they would lose their means of livelihood once the online lottery system uh, kicks into place. But uh, the cabinet is still trying to uh, in introduce this online lottery system in order to curb the prices and uh, overpricing of the lottery tickets. So this is uh, a debate that's going back and forth and uh, it remains to be seen what is going to be done and whether a compromise can be reached. It's true that, you know, that, that is a, uh, a oh, I, can't, I can't even say the word, you know, <laughs> it is a career for a lot of people out there. Do you see them all the time, especially, mm. you know, I mean, it's a cyclical, the lottery is a cyclical, so you see them out there. For them, yeah, it's a great it's revenue, and I can understand their, their objections to mm. it. You know, 
a lot of well, most other countries, at least in the West, they all have the ticketed systems where you tell them numbers and they print mm -hmm. them out for you. It's a little easier to manage as well and track everything. Mm -hmm. But you know what the government really should do if if they know that a large portion of the population is going to be put out of a, that particular job, mm -hmm. they should have something alternative for them to do. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree on that. What, what when we're talking about vending machines, are we talking about on the street corner vending machines, or like in, in some of the other the Western countries, it's in the uh, the news agents, you have to go into a shop and physically buy mm. one. Because my concern is if it's a vending machine on the street, anybody, you know, young children can get it. It's not as regulated as, as in the mm. store. Yeah, so I, I, would, I would think it would, it would have to be implemented. You'd have to have a convenience store yeah, or other. Like 7 Eleven or mm -hmm. something like that. 7 <laughs> Eleven is a fallback on every <laughs> everything sort of ticketing <laughs> imaginable and bill payments and well, whatnot. Fact, you know, you know, we, we mentioned before you can now buy tickets to the national parks. Well, why yeah. not be able to have, yeah. a, have a lot of yeah. tickets and as well? And a lottery at the same time. Maybe you'll have uh, plane tickets there in yeah. the future. Don't and know who to take care of. Give it to 7 Eleven. <laughs> 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 they got it covered. But they do need to look seriously. They do need to look into something else for the disabled if they're going to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Really well, that does wrap it up. The talk of the town today now looking up after the break is I have an interview with those who know him of Tong, uh, Todd Tongdi, ah, <laughs> a very well-known foreigner among Thais here for his musical exploits and all his, his mm. charity work that he does uh, as well. He's mm. really embraced the Thai culture here. He's got a lot of history here and a lot of great projects, which yeah. I will go over with him in the interview speaks Thai better than I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yep, and coming up after that, we have Expat Lifestyle, where... Uh, well, me. It's you. Exactly, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> yep, I'm, uh, I'm out and about, and, and not long ago I met with Answig, which was Australian New Zealand group, and this time I'm meeting with another nationality, the French Women's Group. So uh, to show you uh, all the expats out there that there are other nationality groups to join. So I'm talking with the, the French women and about what they do and about their charity uh, fundraising as well. So very interesting. Excellent. <laughs> well, don't go away because we have those coming up right after the break.